Hi everyone and welcome to Behind the Bumpers. We are here with Team 7457 Super Duper out of Indianapolis, Indiana. They're going to walk through their robot, how they have redundancies on multiple systems, and how they're going to incorporate different systems into how they've improved over the years. I'm here with Ezra and Nathan and they're going to walk us through. Coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. First Team SolidWorks is free for you. Design in 3D, build your robot, and gain the career-ready skills 80% of employers look for when hiring engineers. Get SolidWorks for your entire team when you go to SolidWorks.com first. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu slash first. Right, Ezra, this is an excellent machine you guys have here. Can you start with some of the priorities that you had in terms of center of gravity and how that affected some of the choices that you made? So center of gravity was really important in this game. We made quite a few choices specifically for center of gravity, such as our extremely low chassis. Um, you can see our chassis is really low to the ground. Um, Nathan can talk more about our chassis. We geared our um, swerve modules L3 because we wanted to prioritize um, acceleration over top velocity. That's another reason we needed center of gravity so low, so we didn't tip. So if we want to go through the journey of our game piece, it's we start out with the intake. And something really special about our intake is the fact that we didn't initially expect to have an L1 mechanism. We didn't expect to do L1 at all. But through the season and through testing, we realized that with our funnel that we already had, there was a perfectly open space right here where a um, whorl could go using the already um, wired motors. So now we can intake, we would take the coral, put it in here at anything, and it would go into the end effector. The end effector is a dual mechanism, so it can also take in the algae right here, and it can also uh, score it. And using the elevator, it can place it on from L2, 3, and a 4. Back to Ezra. So if uh, I could speak on the end effector a little bit more, something we really, really prioritize as a team um, and something that goes into every step of our design process is redundancy. We have redundancy all over our robot. As you can see on the end effector, we have two brake beams to make sure our coral is in the same spot every time. We have sensors all over the robot. We have three whole line lights, two on the front, one on the back. We have redundancy on both sides of our climber, which allows our driver to just be able to drive up to the climb and press no buttons. As soon as the triggers are triggered on the um, climber, it automatically climbs. A huge thing our programming team prioritizes is the less the driver has to think about pressing, the more the driver can drive. Um, and back that, to Nathan. And, our, and as speaking of that, we with the limitation switches on the climber, all you had to do is press either one simultaneously. So it could be the top right, the bottom left, it could be the top left, the bottom right, any of them. And whenever those are triggered, they will pull these hooks inside, forcing these wheels to turn like that and grab onto the cage. And once one left or right side is grabbed onto it, it can swing these on and it'll pull it in and it instantly pull down. And once it's up in there, it's up. And that's about it. That sounds pretty cool. The whole journey of the coral through the robot looks really interesting. How do you determine your set points with your elevator and how you move throughout the reef? Um, so a lot of our design process is a mix between CAD and testing. We have all of this very well done in CAD down to the tube is punched, everything can move and sync. When we do our CAD, we take into account what programming can do. So although there might be constraints or places where it hits in CAD, we make sure programming has dead zones where that can never happen. A lot of PID tuning. When it comes to knowing where we are on the reef, or like by the reef and on the field, um, we use a mix of odometry and um, vision. Uh, we also have redundancy in that, believe it or not. If our vision is over a certain degree off of what our odometry says it is, it disregards that specific reading to make sure our if our vision is giving us a funky reading, it won't mess up our robot. Um, if Nathan wants to talk about how the CAD works and how we get our values from CAD. Um, 
Basically, I mean, everything that we do from CAD, I mean, is PTC on shape, standard. Um, we trial and error with a lot of things, testing, prototyping, seeing things from other teams from RI3D, very crucial for us. Um, and then we test it in real life. We noticed that, like, at the beginning, these were steel plates. Now we use SRPP because we have the material. We laser cut them out and they're all nice. Um, it also did cut away from right here a lot more. But anyways, they were aluminum before. Now they're SRPP. Very good material, very light, and very and can take a beating. As you can see over here, it does have multiple battle scars, if Adam will zoom in. Um, and then also from the top over here, we use polycarb just to guide just to help guide that coral in. Because once that coral goes in, it goes straight in there. And we have this hoop right here that is base that is uh, barely the size for the algae to fit in for for multiple compression. And back to Ezra. Um, there's even more redundancy there. We have our motors tracking the position, and we have three-board encoders on not only the not only the funnel tilt, but also the end effector. And we used to, ha or we still do have a stator or a stator current spike detector to make sure we know when we have the ball instead of relying on the vi uh, the driver's vision. Um, I love the changes that you made to make this robot lighter and more reliable. Yeah. What we, other changes have you made throughout the season? This is an off season, so what have you improved? Um, so these protectors on the limelight are 3D printed with TPU. We realized that the coral can actually hit the limelight and break them if we don't have something to protect them. So that's something we added. As Nathan had touched on earlier, we changed from aluminum to SRPP. That's another way that we prioritized our center of gravity. The aluminum was much heavier and there was more of a chance of us tipping. Um, and our, and so it was a better idea to switch to the SRPP. Um, the L1 was another change made throughout the season. If Nathan wants to talk. Yeah, as Ezra said earlier, the, the most major change that we have made to the robot would be the L1 mechanism. Go ahead and do an L1. Alright, um, we need a coral. So, we can just take this right here and drop it straight in there. And then if he scores back out, it launches it right out onto the, onto the L1 station. Um, and then from there, basically this is the this is the biggest change that we made to it. But also we've made like little changes too and tweaks and messes with it, um, such as this top piece right here. A coral cannot go over on this and smack it comes in here. We've also made like zip ties right there. So like I mean, it's never going to get this far. But even if that extra layer of protection really does come in handy, because if this goes right here, imagine what it could do to all your uh, technology and your wires, such of that. And that's basically it for all the new ma new maintenances that we have to it. Well, all these changes have certainly paid off. 7457 is one of the best teams in Indiana and one of the greatest teams in the world. Absolutely proved it on the world stage this year in the Curie Division. So thank you for taking the time to go through your robot. And good luck out on the field at Boiler Bot Battle. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. For over 100 years, Kettering University has offered a better education because from day one, that education has been built on hands-on co-op learning. Kettering's impressive alumni network includes founders, presidents, CEOs, and frontrunners who have a reputation for transforming industries with their resolute leadership. Apply today at kettering.edu first. First Team SolidWorks is free for you. Design in 3D, build your robot, and gain the career-ready skills 80% of employers look for when hiring engineers. Get SolidWorks for your entire team when you go to solidworks.com first.